So going on page 93 when we are done. And we're going to start by looking at the picture down there. Because we're going to talk about area of regular polygons. So what makes a polygon a regular polygon? Who can tell me? Yes. Very good. Equiangular and equilateral. It's the nice pretty ones. If I said close your eyes and picture an octagon, you're most likely picturing something that looks like a stop sign, less likely to be picturing something that's all weird shaped, but just has eight sides, right? So it's the ones you think about when you think about the polygon names. And so the formulas that we're going to use today are only for the regular polygons. So we're going to start by looking at this picture and labeling some things. First thing I'm going to do is draw a circle around it so that this is inscribed in the circle and not just around it, but the vertices have to be on the circle so it would look something like this. And it wouldn't necessarily have to be dotted, but if I don't do it dotted, it won't look even remotely like a circle. Whew. That's not even that great. Good enough. Well, that's kind of bad. Um, so this polygon is now inscribed in the circle because the vertices are the only things that intersect the circle there, okay? And we did that because the parts that we're going to label on the polygon, a lot of them are very similar to the parts that we have for a circle. And um, you're already very familiar with those. So the first thing is this point here is point C which would be the center of the circle that we have. It's also the center of the polygon. So a regular polygon does have a center. What's the other part of a circle that we use a lot? What's another piece of a circle? A radius, okay? So line segment CD would, could represent the radius of the circle. You agree with that? This is also the radius of the polygon. Now, one main difference is in a circle, you have an infinite number of places to draw the radius, and it's the same all the way around the circle. For a polygon, you have a finite number of places because it can only go from the vertex, I'm sorry, from the center to each vertex. So how many sides does this polygon have? Five, five which means it's a pentagon. pentagon. So since it's a pentagon, it has five sides, there are five places to draw the radius. If it was a hexagon, there'd be six places and so forth. Circle, there's an infinite amount. But that's my radius there, okay? And it would be the same as the radius of the circle that it's inscribed in. This, of course, is the, a side of the polygon. And then we looked at angles of polygons. And um, the whole N minus 2 times 180 thing, the interior angles. But that was these angles here. We don't really care so much about those when we're doing area. Instead, we care about this angle right here. What do you think that angle is called? Because we did them with circles. The central angle, because the vertex is at the center. So this is the central angle. Okay, everybody good with all that so far? All right, and then, so when I draw in the radius these five times, I have divided my polygon into what? triangles okay so tell me something about these five triangles that I got they're all isosceles because the radius is the same right and what else they're all congruent because it is a regular polygon they're all going to be congruent because it is a pentagon there's five of them if it was a hexagon there'd be six of them and so forth and so on and they are always going to be isosceles because the radius will always be congruent does that make sense to you and again, that's always with a regular polygon. If it's not a regular polygon, then it doesn't count. Um, and so when, not only are they isosceles, but so then when I draw in the height of the triangle, since this is an isosceles triangle, what does the height do to the base here? Uh, it bisects it, so bam. So not only do I get five congruent triangles, but then when I draw in the height, each of those triangles gets divided into two congruent right triangles, okay, every single time. Um, what changes is how many you get and those, those kinds of things. Now, in order to find the area of the regular polygon, I could just find the area of one triangle and then do what? Multiply it by? Not by four. In this case, it would be five or the number of sides in general. Does that make sense to you? And we know how to find the area of a triangle. 
Um, so the base is the side length, but then this height that we drew in, this little segment actually has a name that's related to regular polygons. So the only segments we're concerned with with the polygon are, well, three, I guess. We want the side, this is the radius, and then this that comes perpendicular to the side, this is a brand new word for you. This is called the apothem, A-P-O-T-H-E-M. It can also be pronounced apothem. It's like a potato, potato type of thing, but um, it is the apothem. Then we, so the side would be a lowercase s, center most of the time is c, but really could be anything. Radius, of course, is r, apothem is a, central angle doesn't have a variable that goes with it. Okay, we all good? Any questions at this point? All right, so let's go back up to the top and fill this stuff in, okay? So you need to put that away unless you would like it to meet my shredder. Thank you very much. Okay, so the center of a regular polygon is equidistant from the vertices, meaning it's the same distance from the vertices, right? And this is the center, only the regular polygons would have that, and it's equidistant. Okay. All right, so then the blank is the perpendicular distance from the center to the side of the polygon. That is the that we it's a new word, but it's really just the height of that triangle. Then the next one is central angle. Okay. And again, of a regular polygon, its vertex is at the center, and its sides pass through consecutive vertices. And that's important because it's just a tiny bit different than a central angle of a circle, okay? Because, if we go back here and look at this, if I look at this from a circle perspective, then angle FCG is a central angle, and angle FCH would just be a different central angle of a circle. You agree with that? But because this says the central angle of a polygon has to pass through consecutive vertices, FCG is a central angle. But FCH would not be because it doesn't pass through consecutive vertices. So from a, per, a circle perspective, I have all kinds of combinations I could make for the different central angles I could use here. But from the polygon perspective, there's just one. There's actually five, but they're all congruent. So there's only one measurement, and then there's five of them, or however many sides you have, and they're all the same. So just a little bit different on the, the uh, definition there. Then it says, each central angle measure of a regular n-gon is blank. So n-gon means what? A polygon, and n represents what? The number of sides. So basically this is saying this works for all of them, like whatever polygon we're going to use. In this case in particular, if I wanted the measure of this angle, I would do what to find it? 360 divided by 5. Good. So then for an n-gon, that would be 360 divided by what? n. And that's going to be something that we're going to need to be able to do to be able to, we need to find. Okay. Are you good with all that? All right. So now we're going to go and come up with our area formula, much like we did yesterday when we were, came up with the area formula for a rhombus or a kite. Like I could just find the area of the triangles and do my thing, but we came up with a formula. We're going to come up with this formula as well. So the area of each, we're going to find the area of each triangle, and we're going to in particular use triangle FCE, because that's the one that already has the height drawn in there. So I know how to find the area of a triangle. The area of a triangle is equal to one half base times height. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute in variables related to the polygon into our formula. One half, what represents the base of the triangle for the polygon? The side. And what represents the height? the apothem. So instead of one half base times height, it's one half side times apothem, or S times A. That's the area of the triangle, right? And once I find the area of the triangle, I would multiply it by what to get the whole area of the polygon? Five for this, but I want a formula that's not just for a pentagon. N, okay? So five for a pentagon, but I want it for any of them to be N. So we're going to take this down here, do a little bit more work. So that's the area triangle. To find the area of the polygon, 
I'm going to take n and multiply it by that 1 half s times a. Right. Now, do those parentheses really serve much of a purpose? Nope. nope. Yeah, just keep it organized. I, that's just kind of what I substituted in. But if they disappeared, it wouldn't make anything bad happen, right? So could I multiply things in any order I want to? Is 2 times 3 the same as 3 times 2? Yes. Yeah, so if I'm going to multiply all that together, bless you, I could mix them up and it'd still be fine. We agree with that? So, yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mix it up and do 1 half A times N times S because I want you to see something here. All right, so if we just look at this n times s, if I find n times s for any regular polygon, what piece of information does that give me? Think about what n times s would give you for any regular polygon. Well, yeah, n is the number of sides, s is whatever the side length is. If I multiply those and do n times s, what does that give me? Perimeter. Perimeter. Okay, give me the perimeter. N times S represents the perimeter. Perimeter is N times S, right? For any regular polygon. However many sides it has times the side length, got to be the perimeter. So instead of N times S, I'm going to substitute in P for perimeter. And it is a capital P because it is a calculated value. So we know that the lowercase letters represent numbers or values, right? The capital letters have represented points, which represent our angles. But then in some formulas, the capital letters also represent a number, but it would be like a calculated value, like an area or a perimeter or something. So instead of 1 half A times N times S, it's going to be 1 half A times capital P, which means the total area of the polygon, or our formula for the area of a regular polygon, Area of the polygon is equal to one half apothem times perimeter. Hmm? Hmm? That's the total area of the polygon. Yes, because I can't give an actual value here because there's not any information. So yes, it should say really the total area of any po any regular polygon, but we're just kind of using that as a, as a sketch there. We all good? So in order to find the area, I have to know the apothem, which either they're going to give me or I'm going to have to find. I have to know the perimeter, which they're rarely going to give me. But for that, I need the number of sides and the side length, which either they're going to give me or I'm going to need to be able to find. Um, the central angle isn't, doesn't really directly play a part in this, but you're going to need it to find stuff when they don't just flat out give you everything. Okay, so before we move on, we're going to do a couple of little central angle problems. Um, again, we're not touching the calculator yet. You don't need it. If I want to find the central angle of a polygon of the pentagon, I would do 360 divided by what? So what's 360 divided by 5? No fair use in the calculator. You don't need it. 72. So 72 degrees. A square is a regular polygon, right? So this would be 360 divided by what? 4. Four. And that gives you 90. So you might be thinking, well, duh, I already knew that they were 90. But that's a different angle. In your square, yes, these are all congruent and these are all 90. But these aren't the angles that we're finding here. What we're finding here is the central angle. This right here and this right here is what we calculated there. So it's not if it's not like you just, oh, I already did you really? I mean, you probably could have figured it out, but I, that's probably not what you were thinking about. Yes? No, we're just talking about regular polygons, right? Oh, so yeah. Just, just regular, yes. So then 360 for the 12 gone divided by what? 12, what does that give me? 30. 30. 30, not 36. Okay, so it was super easy to find the central angle, but that's something that you're going to have to calculate the, to get what we need to find. Okay, we all good with that? All right, so let's go and see how we're going to use this. Oh, did it not? There we go. Okay, so this says find the area of each polygon, and I did leave out the word regular here because you're going to have to be told that. That's not something that you can just, it's going to have to be labeled or you're told that or whatever, and I just left the, left the word off. Um, all right, and I think you have more room at the top than I do. Yes, I'm going to. It's fine that you wrote yours above that, but I don't have as much room as you do, and I need that room, so regular. I'm going to rewrite it right there. So that I have more room up here. 
I don't, you don't need very much room. I just need some room for some words there. All right, we're going to find the area of each polygon. So the first thing I do is write down the area of the formula. So the area of the polygon is equal to one half apothem times perimeter. Did they give me the apothem? No. no. Did they give me the perimeter? No. no. Okay, it's yes or no question. No. They did not give me either one of those, so I have to go and find them, which I can or I couldn't work the problem. Um, I'm going to have to find the perimeter. That is n times s. What is n here? Six. six. What is s? Six. six. So the perimeter is? 36. 36. Okay, so that was pretty easy. Apothem, they did not give me. It's not even drawn in. So every time you start one of these, okay, you always draw at least to radii, okay? Always. The more consistent you are really in anything you do, the better off you're going to be when you go to solve things and, and figure things out. I'm going to draw in the radius, which means I'm just going to have to kind of eyeball where this is going to be. Two radius, right? I know that these are congruent because I'm going to get an isosceles triangle every time. This is my apothem that I need. And the apothem is always going to divide this base into two congruent pieces every time. And I know that this is six that was given to me. I need the central angle, which I'm going to find by doing 360 divided by what? Six. OK. And that gives me what? 60. OK. Once you get that far, then you are going to take this out of the polygon and redraw this whole isosceles triangle here and bigger so that you can label it. That's the whole point, and so it's not all confusing inside the polygon, because sometimes it is. This is A. Those are congruent. This is 6. This whole thing is 60. Right. So if this whole thing is 60, then what are these angles here? 30 and 30. So every time the isosceles triangle that you have is going to get divided into two congruent right triangles. Okay. In this case, these are both 30. So what are these angles? 60. So the triangle that you, the big green triangle that you took out of here, the isosceles triangle is actually what kind of triangle? No, listen to the question that I'm asking. Don't answer what you think I want to hear, which is usually not what y'all are trying to tell me. The, the big triangle that I took out and redrew is what kind of triangle? Equiangular. equiangular or equilateral, right? Be very careful. That does not happen every single time in a regular polygon. It will happen every single time in a hexagon because every single time in a hexagon, it's 360 divided by 6, so you'll always get 60. And since these are always congruent, these will always be 60. You do get an equilateral triangle if it is a regular hexagon. If it's a pentagon, an octagon, a non whatever else, then that is not happening. Okay, so be very careful assuming that it's just going to work the same on every single one of them. All right, now, um, do I know what the radius is then? What's the radius? Six. Because it's equilateral, right? Like, if I had to actually do any work to find it out, I really don't care because it's not part of this, right? It's not nothing, something I have to go and find. If they give it to me, I have to use it. I do know that these are both six, though, just because it is, a, you know, an equilateral triangle. I know that. All right, so go in here and try and figure out what my apothem is. Well, what is this length right here? Three. Okay, this is always going to get bisected. Those are both three. So what's the apothem? Three squared of three. See how easy that is? You should be at the point where you're just labeling that. If you still need to write s, 2s, s squared of 3, you can. Go ahead. But you really should be at the point where you can just label it and know how it works. If you have to divide and maybe rationalize, you might want to label a little bit more, show a little bit more work. But you should be able to just see the pattern and, and put it in there. All right, so then I have everything I need. I go back over here. I have 1 half times the apothem, which is 3 squared of 3, times the perimeter, which is 36. So I could take half of 36 and multiply it by 3, or I could multiply 3 times 36 and take half of it. We haven't really done that why that much. And even if the number is bigger, it still might be easier. So what's 3 times 30? 
90. What's 3 times 6? 18. So all together that gives me 108. And then I'd have to take half of that. What does that give me? 54. So the area of the polygon is equal to 54 square root of 3 meters squared. I could have taken half of 36 and gotten 18, and then 18 times 3 is 54 also. It really doesn't matter what order you do it in. You do whatever you can make it work the best in your own mind, and it's fine. Okay? Any questions? We're good? If you do this same process every time, draw the triangle, separate it, redraw it, you're not always going to be given the same pieces, but if you're consistent in what you do and you label and do your thing, you'll know how to find what you need to find because it's all pieces of stuff you already know how to do. All right, so let's look at B. We're still finding the area of the regular polygon, so I'm going to write down my formula. Area of the polygon is equal to oops, one half, there you go, one half apothem times perimeter. Did they give me the apothem? No. Did they give me the perimeter? No. Okay, so I have to go find both of them. Don't discount the whole finding the perimeter off to the side, even though it's easy because one of the most common mistakes is not actually finding the perimeter and not actually substituting the perimeter and doing a side length or whatever else. So perimeter is n times s. What is n? 6. Did they give me s? No. Okay, so not, did they give it to me, yes or no? No. So I'm going to pause right there. Um, oh, I lost my train of thought there. I don't remember what I was going to say. But, all right, so I'm going to come back over here. My next step is to always draw in at least two radii. So there we go. And then I know these are congruent, so if that's 10, that's 10. I draw in my apothem. This is the central angle. I know that it's 360 divided by 6, so what does that give me? 60. Okay. So then I separate and redraw my triangle. And I know that this is 10, 10, this whole thing is 60, this is A. So both of these angles here are 30. Now, I've taken out the entire triangle. I always get two congruent right triangles. You're only ever going to use one right triangle at a time, but you still redraw the whole thing, and I'll show you why here in just a second. Um, so what is this length right here then? Five. And what's the apothem? Five squared of three. Okay. All right, so side length. Is, this, is my side length five? No, what is it? It's ten, which we did know from the beginning. Because it's a hexagon, we know that this is an equilateral triangle, so this thing is ten here, and that's why this is 5 and this is 5. If you do not take the entire triangle out of your polygon at one point or another, you're going to use the wrong number somewhere because one of the most common mistakes is using this number as the side length when, yeah, it's the side length of the triangle, but that's not the side length of the polygon, so you want to be careful. So then that means my perimeter is 60. Then I can come back over here and substitute this stuff in and I get 1 half times the apothem, which is 5 squared of 3, times the perimeter, which is 60. So half of 60 is 30. 30 times 5 is 150. So 150 squared of 3 inches squared. We all good? Any questions at all? All right. Next one. So still doing area of regular polygons. So area is equal to one half apothem times perimeter. Did they give me the apothem? No. Did they give me the perimeter? No. So perimeter is equal to n times s. What is n? Five. What is s? Four. So your perimeter is 20. So one of the questions I get from this a lot of times is, um, so how, where did you get in from? Where did we get in from? It's the number of sides. You count. One, two, three, four, five. There's no magic there. It's not difficult. Don't make it harder than it is. Like there's some crazy process to that. You count. That's all you got to do. So your perimeter is 20. So I come back over here. I draw in two radii. Draw in my apothem because I don't have it. So I need it. Right? I know that these are congruent. This is my central angle. So it's going to be 360 divided by what? Five. And what does that give me? 72. Okay. So then I separate and redraw this. 
and this is going to be this whole thing is four so is the radius four no this is 72 this is a right so what's what are each one of these angles 36 36 right so I'm going to use this triangle right here do I know any sides of this purple triangle that I just outlined yes which one this space right here this is two but I do I know this one right here no I know that these are congruent but that's all I got right now right so can I use special right triangles no can I use Pythagorean theorem no I don't have enough information for that either what do I have to do trig okay so here's my angle this is the opposite side this is the hypotenuse that makes this adjacent so I have to use adjacent because that's what I'm looking for. I have to use the opposite because that's where my information is. Hypotenuse, I really don't care what the radius is. I don't need it. So um, opposite and adjacent is which trig ratio? Tangent. OK, good. So the tangent of what? 36. 36 is equal to the opposite, which is 2, over the adjacent, which is a. Variables in the denominator, so what do we do? Switch places, good. So A is equal to 2 over the tangent of 36. Now is when you get to go use your calculator, because you have to. What do you need to check in your calculator? Degree mode. And if you cleared your RAM like I told you to, then you should need to put it in degree mode, but double check that you've done that. So we're going to type in 2 divided by the tangent of 36. And then with that looking in your calculator, looking at you in the calculator, before you do anything else, let's talk about what we do with this number. Is this, is this my final answer? No. That's the apothem that I have to then use to get my final answer, right? So since I have to use this number, what should I do with it? Store it. So I'm going to store it. Now you can store it wherever you want. X is the easiest, but I called it A, so I'd rather store it in A. So I'm going to store it in alpha A, and there it is. So then... I'm going to go to, when I write this down, I'm going to write that my apothem is equal to 2.75 dot, dot, dot. I don't even remember what it said. But I'm putting the dot, dot, dot there to remind myself that I've got to use the stored number. You never, ever, ever, ever type back in a calculated decimal. I mean, if it's 1.5, that's different. But if you round it at all, and even if you type in all the decimals that you see on the calculator, it's still not accurate enough because the calculator is way more stored than that. Sometimes you still get the right answer to three decimal places. Sometimes you don't. It depends on the number and what else has to happen with it in the formula. But you really, really need to get in the habit of storing it. Your final answer should never have a dot, dot, dot on it. That makes no sense. I see that and it makes me laugh. Clearly you have no idea what you're doing. You're just doing stuff. That's to remind me that, yeah, that's the number. And then I'm going to go and substitute it back in, okay? So then I'm going to go up here to substitute it in. And there's a couple of different ways you can do it. The way that I usually show y'all to do it, I'm going to do it that way. And then I had a question earlier, and I'll show you how you can do it a different way. But So it's 1 half times the apothem, which is this number. But again, I'm going to put 275 dot, dot, dot to remind myself I'm not actually typing that in. That's in the calculator for me, times 20. So somebody said, well, what if I just, can I just put A there? Okay, some of y'all are pushing buttons and not listening to me. Braden, that would be you, so why don't you listen to what I have to say here. Um, you can do it differently. Like in pre-cal right now, we're storing all kinds of things. We got A, B, and C stored in there, and sometimes more than that, depending on what we're doing. And so type putting all those little numbers with the dot, dot, dots would get very confusing. Plus, I wouldn't necessarily remember which variable I put it in, right? Right now, I know all I have is something in A. So you could just literally write down 1 half. Now, in your calculator, you can only do capital letters. Whether you put a capital or a lowercase here, it doesn't matter. But if I just do that, 1 half A times 20, then um, especially if you have more than one thing you're storing, like are you looking for that or do you know what it is? So I circle it, and that reminds me that's a calculator value that I'm using. And in your calculator, you're literally doing 1 half times A times 20. Does that make sense to you? And so either way, you wouldn't have to do both. But one of these two, but at the very least, you would need to have this written down over here. Yes? Well, we'll talk about that in just a second. So um, you at least need to have that written down right there. So when you go to your calculator, um, so sometimes you're in the middle of things and like you get distracted and I cleared my screen off. I'm like, dang it, did I actually store that or not? If I do alpha A 
that gives me that number back to let me know that, hey, I really do have that stored, right? And I have it. If not, I can just type it back in because I showed my work like I'm supposed to, and I can get it back there. So when you go to type this in, if one half, you can put it in there as one half. If you want to use 0.5, that's fine. If it's one third, can you use 0.3? Or even 0.33? No, like you'd have to use one third, but it's fine. So we're going to do 0.5 times alpha A times 20, right? That gives you your answer. Now, can you easily take half of 20 and know what it is? Yes, but if you are using the calculator, use the calculator. Are you more likely to make a ridiculous mistake on something easy or something difficult? Something easy. And even though you can take half of numbers, then you may do it and then take half of it again or whatever. Just let the calculator do it all so you don't do something ridiculous that you knew how to do in first grade. Because that's, again, that's where we make our, we're all capable, me included. I do it all the time and it's very frustrating. So let the calculator do it all for you. This is my final answer, so there's really no reason to store that. So I just need to write down that the area of the polygon is equal to 27 point what? 528. Is there any dot, dot, dot anywhere? No, it needs to be correct to three decimal places, and that is inches squared. Okay, storing numbers can, is really going to become something that's important to you and your friend. Okay, we good? All right, next one. Now, this is a triangle. We know how to find the area of a triangle, right? One half base times height. Did they give me the base? Did they give me the height? No. But this is a regular polygon, which means it's what kind of triangle? It's uh, equilateral, right? Um, so it's an equilateral triangle. If you're given information that lends itself to regular polygons, just treat it like a regular polygon. Way easier than trying to force it down one half base times height. So this is one half apothem times perimeter. And I need the perimeter. What? It's n times s. What is n? Three. Three. Oh, dang it. It's three. Did they give me S? No. Is it 14? Yes. No, it is not. What does 14 represent? The radius. It's not the apothem, it's not a side length, it's the radius. So I start like I did every other problem and I draw in two radii, draw in my apothem, get my central angle, so that's going to be 360 divided by what? Three, which gives me what? 120. Then I am going to separate and redraw this outside of the picture. So I'm going to draw it bigger so I actually have something to label. And this is A, this is 14, so this is 14. This whole thing is 120. And if that's the case, then what's each one of these angles? 60. Okay. So the little right triangle that you get is what kind of triangle? 30, 60, 90. But it's flipped around from how it is in a hexagon, right? So you got to make sure you're paying attention to what's what here. So I need to find the, that side length and the apothem. Which is easier to find first? The apothem, because this is 30. So what's the apothem? 7. Okay. So 2s, s, and then this would be what? 7 squared of 3. Pay attention to where your angles are. Okay. So to go find the perimeter, oh dang it, I have totally broken it. To go find the perimeter, the, my side length 7 squared of 3? No, it's not. Oh, see, I just messed up my pen. The whole, this whole thing is a side length. Oh goodness, nothing wants to work now. What the heck? It's like I'm out of ink or something. I don't understand. <laughs> I can't be out of ink. Why isn't this? There we go. So this whole thing is 14 squared of 3. Because that's 7 squared of 3, this is 7 squared of 3. If you do not take the entire triangle out, you will mess that up at least once. So this is 3 times 14 squared of 3. So what's the perimeter? 42, 42 squared of 3. So that's my perimeter. I found the apothem. So I come back over here and substitute it in. One half times the apothem, which is seven, times the perimeter, which is 42 squared of three. And half of 42 is 21. So seven times 21, what's seven times 20? 
140. And then 7 times 1 is 7. So this is 147 squared of 3 centimeters squared. If it is something that you can find using special right triangles, you have to use special right triangles to get an exact answer. If it is something that you can't and you have to use trig, then you use trig and you get a decimal. Okay? But can you use trig on stuff that you could do special right triangles on? Yes, but it's not going to give you an exact answer and that's going to make it wrong. Okay? All right, so let's look at these pictures down here at the bottom. Look at how some of this stuff works together. If I draw this in, in this triangle, what part of the polygon is that? It's the radius. Okay. Can I double the radius to get the height? No. Okay, because that's what sometimes people will try to do to force it down one half base times height, and it does not work that way. Um, if I continue this, what is this pink one I just drew in? The apothem, right? So that's the apo the pink one's the apothem, the green one is the radius which means overall the height is equal to what? Radius, Radius plus apothem. And even so you could force it down the one half base times height, but it's really going to be easier if you just let it do its thing with the regular polygon. Okay. All right. What part of the polygon is this? The this is the apothem. And this one right here would be what? The apothem. So then this right here represents what? The side length. Okay, so the side length and the side length could be equal to what? Base 2a. Okay, so the side length of a regular quadrilateral, which is a what? Square. So the side length of the square is also just 2 times the apothem. Make sense? That's enough. So let's look at another square. What part of the polygon is this? The radius. the radius. Okay, and then this right here is the radius. radius. And since this is a square, all four of these sides are congruent. So you get two isosceles right triangles, right? Which means these are both 45, 45, 90 triangles. And the hypotenuse of that triangle is just two times r. Does that make sense to you? If I draw this in, what part of the polygon is that? The apothem, right? And remember, the apothem always divides the side into two congruent pieces here. So if this is A, so is this, and so is this. So do you see how you have another isosceles right triangle right here? So this is A, this is A, what would this be? A squared of 2. So the radius is also equal to a squared of 2. Does that make sense? See how that works? Mm -hmm. and, then, um, and then the side length we already knew was 2a, but just kind of. You don't have to, like, memorize these or anything. I just want you to see the relationship because it will kind of come to your attention at some point, and I want you to see how all these work together. All right, so then let's look at this. What is this? Radius. Radius. And this is the, what? Radius as well, yes. Then here, to get my central angle, I would do 360 divided by 4, which gives me 90. You're not stupid. So that means this is a right angle, right? So if that's true, then this is another isosceles right triangle. And this is right angle. So this is R, this is R. What is this? R, R squared of 2. R, R, R squared of 2, right? So the side length, we already knew was equal to 2 times A, but it's also equal to the radius times the square root of 2, okay? And it's because you have a bunch of little 45, 45, 90 triangles in there. That's true for a square. It's not true for every polygon, okay, for squares and then for the equilateral triangles, but those are just some special things that happen there, okay? We good? Any questions? All righty, go ahead and get that glued in.